Glad to have you guys in tonight. If you are new to the program, welcome in. Make sure you hit that thumbs up button and damn sure make sure you're subscribing. It's a loaded show. And as you can see, based off the, the title right here, I've got top 10 college football quarterbacks right now. And I'm not even going to make you wait for it, boys. We're starting the show with a top 10 list right now. And we got a hefty OLI. We got a hefty OLI on this list. And I got to be honest. I, I, yeah, 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 as expected. I got to be honest. Um, I did not expect this to be this hard. I thought I was going to get through 10 lickety split. I thought I was going to get through all 10 really, really quickly. I didn't. I stopped at 8 and had a real tough time identifying 9 and 10 on this list. Um, so here we go. OLIs. Uh, let's start with my man Brady Cook. I think it's going to get better. Hasn't looked great. I think it's going to get better. Dylan Riola looked really, really solid as a freshman. By the way, you guys know how my uh, quarterback rankings go. This is a combination of gut. This is a combination of film. This is a combination of where I would draft you to start my team. This is a combination last and most least. All right. Uh, stats. How, how well are you producing? Ah, I'm going to watch the tape first feel how my gut feels. This is how my gut feels. Brady Cook, Dylan Raiola, Taylor Green, sneaky OLI here, uh, and my man Thomas Castellanos from Ware County on the OLI here as well up there at Boston College. Really, really explosive. A very tough assignment as a defensive coordinator to try to prepare for. Are we ready for the top 10? Let's hear it. All right, number 10. Malik Murphy. Mm, oh, yeah, sneaky. buddy. Malik Murphy is a really fun watch right now. Doesn't have a ton of help at Duke, as you would imagine. All right. It's not Texas's weapons. It's not Texas's offense. But this man's putting it up 48 times a game, and he's managed to do it relatively turnover free. He's got a couple, but not like putting it at risk a ton of time. And by the way, 6'5, 245 pounds, got a chooch on him, and looks the part. And it's fun to watch. It's really, really fun to watch. What I've been been impressed by is the mental acumen already he doesn't he hasn't played a lot of football this was a guy coming into uh college football after the covid season real real uh, uh inexperienced in terms of even high school football i think malik only had like seven or eight games on tape available entering uh college there at texas obviously doesn't get on the field i am loving what he's doing right now balling with traits is what i'm calling that number nine john mateer mm. your boy mateer Gary Mateer makes the list right here. My boy, John Mateer. And this is the only stat you're going to get all night on the top tens list. You ready for this? Wazoo right now. 3-0. and Sneaky 3-0. and Wazoo averaging 478 total yards of offense right now. 478 total yards of offense. Do you know how much my boy John Mateer is contributing to that? 341 of those 478. Lord. All the Mateer bus. It is all John Mateer right now for them fighting Wazoo's sticking up for the pack too. All right. On to number eight. Dylan Gabriel catching on, oh. catching back on. It's coming back. If he could just hit a wide open receiver once in a while, he'd probably be way, way further up on this list. Uh, I'm going to go number seven right here. Give me Shador Sanders. If only we could see him behind a decent offensive line. Yeah. If only we could see him behind a decent offensive line. Now, here's the thing. It's kind of a catch-22 because he might have one of the best weaponries in all of college football mm -hmm. in terms of a wide receiver uh, unit. But – Ooh, there's a lot of questions on that offensive line with regards to protections. And I'm also, if I'm drafting him as an NFL evaluator, and I know we're going outside of the top 10 list, but if I'm drafting him, I've got a question like, hey, how much are you involved with this protection issues as well? How much of this is you holding on to the football? How much of this is is you dependent? And how much of this is, okay, the guys in front of you are just really, really bad. A lot of pass protection nowadays is respondable or, or responsible uh, in the quarterback's hands with a lot of these offenses. So, uh, number, where are we at? We're at number six now. Number six, Jalen Milrow. Uh, most, explosive, wow. most explosive quarterback and most explosive player probably in college football at this point right now. You guys know my feelings about not only this quarterback, but this offense as a whole, the ability to score on you quickly and and really, really rapidly. Uh, the thing that I've really appreciated so far through this season, this dude, uh, in terms of Kalen DeBoer and this offensive coordinating staff, They've, they've just given up. Not given up, but they've stopped trying to make this guy a pocket passer. They've stopped trying to make this guy process a bunch of reads. They've done exactly what we've asked them to do on this network, which is say, hey, Jalen, I'm really good as a coordinator. If number one option's not open, check number two. If number two's not open, he probably gonna be. If number two's not open, 
then you're the number three option. Take off, pull the ball down, and run. Don't sit there in the pocket too long. I think they've done a really, really good job of designing and using his legs in these football games. And by the way, it's only going to get more and more as the uh, season grows and as the the competition gets tougher. I'm expecting 15 design runs next week in that Georgia football game. I think they have to use his legs uh, because, again, he is extremely explosive. Uh, Felt a little lower on my list than I thought, especially if you're a stats guy. Jackson Dart comes in at number four Mm. for me, or number five for me right here. Um, He is eating right now. 83% completion percentage, but they've played nobody. Absolutely nobody. And you guys know my thing. Six, three and a half, 225. Not the best and most polished passer, in my opinion. No. Uh, and if we were to draft him tomorrow and I say, hey, we're going to start our team with a quarterback, Jackson's going to fall somewhere in this five, six, seven range for me because I don't know if we're, if we're fully, uh, you know, adaptable in terms of scheme. Can we do everything or are we scheme dependent on what Lane's kind of putting in front of us right now? Yeah. Well, and I think one of the things is that he is a great college quarterback. I don't think anyone's really banking on Jackson Dart being a success story in the Correct. NFL. So, I mean, ranking him in the top five of College quarterbacks is absolutely fine. All right, preseason number one uh, after three weeks. Number four, Carson Beck. He's had a tough week last week. I think it was fifteen to twenty six, a buck fifty. Statistically, probably his worst performance as a starting quarterback. And and honestly, I thought there was some hesitancy with regards to pulling the trigger. Um, offensive line's been a little bit suspect, especially last week with regards to pass protection and getting a clean pocket for a guy who. Well, let's be honest, needs a clean pocket. Though, I will say, Carson's legs and athleticism have taken a step this year, uh, and they've needed to do so. I got him at number four. Number three, Nico Iamaliava. Have we? Iamaliava. Iamaliava. Iamaliava at number three. Combo of talent and performance right here. Number two, I know he's hurt. Give me Quinn Ewers. Boy, before he was playing ball, guys, or before he got hurt, guys, he, I thought he was playing some really, really confident football, which leads me into my number one guy. There's not a freaking soul on the planet playing more confidently and more algorithmically based than Cam Ward. Cam Ward, number one wow. right now in college football. By the way, Cam Ward, sneaky big. I, I didn't realize he was a full six two and a half, a full 220. Sneaky, sneaky good start to the season. Not even sneaky. It's out there and out loud. I got Cam Ward, number one. Thoughts, yep. comments, questions, concerns, pick at me right here. It's going to be interesting to – sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt no, you. It's going to be interesting to see how much this list changes, in my opinion, because there's a lot of guys on there that I think it's – do we know they're good or is it kind of they've had the advantage of playing really good football against some pretty mediocre teams? You know, last year we did this all SEC-based, and you talking about picking teeth right now, pulling teeth right now, going – Going like 9 through 16 would be really, really hard. Yeah. Hell, I think going 6 through 16 might be really, really hard in the SEC right now. Kind of a, a sneaky down year for quarterback play in the conference. Are yeah. we are we comfortable saying that? Yeah, but I feel like we kind of felt that way heading into this season. Yeah. Because the overall, like going into this next draft class, it felt very top-heavy. There's really three names everybody knew was going to be in this discussion of Carson Beck, Quinn Ewers, and Shadur Sanders. It's expanded a little bit. Cam Ward's certainly starting to enter his name into that conversation. Uh, so it, it's definitely expanded a little bit, but at the same time, it still feels that it's a small group of guys that tend to be in this very elite category. I do think it is interesting that Shadur is number seven. I would have him higher, in my opinion. Yeah, I, th- I just think that he he is one of the more talented players, and while, it, I, but he, he's also tough to judge because the offensive line is what it is, and the overall cast around him. I, I mean, having Travis Hunter, and they also got Will Shepard, I believe is his name from Vanderbilt. He has some good weapons that he can utilize. Um, but yeah, I think he's just kind of tough to judge. But I, w- I would say he's definitely in that like him in that like five six range. Yeah, instead somewhere of that just seven a little range. higher. Yeah, okay. yeah, you got him over maybe like a Jalen Milrow or maybe even like a a Carson or a, a Jackson Dart right now? Where are you putting him in this list? I would put him over Jalen Milrow. I think he okay. brings more to the game than Jalen Milrow does, but it's 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 hard because Jalen Milrow has played really well this season for Kalen DeBoer. And the legs, of course. There's also but kind of a passer for sure, considerably more uh, as a polished yeah. passer. There's also kind of a leadership question when it comes to Shador. Like we've all seen the post game comments after the Nebraska game and some of the other comments he's had. It, it, it it's kind of interesting. If you were to pick out one quarterback on this list, where it's like, who do you think might have the most leadership issues? I think we'd all point to Shador. So how much of that is again guilty by association? I don't know. Saying it's a rookie mistake on your wide receiver when you throw a pick six is, is pretty bad. And then blaming the office a line. Those things. I, 
They got to get cleaned up. You For can't sure. say that stuff. But then he brought There's the no entire offensive that. line with him to his next press conference. Okay. Yeah. Bounce yeah. back. Shake back. Like I said, questions. Not not bad leader. Can't not concerns. It. Questions. Yes. Yeah. That's, I guess that's fair, fair at this point. Um, 